he makes this, there's a statement made in Proverbs that arrests our attention. If you're there, say amen. amen. By the truth. Oh, I, hold on a minute. Everybody say bye. Bye. Whatever it costs. Yes. Right. Some of you, you already got in your mind. You'll, you'll spend money on that, but not on that. You put money on this, but not. We can tell everything about you by your money. Come on. By the truth. But look at this. Sell it not. <laughs> not how much I can. Oh, I can get this for that. I'm worth this much. If it's not for sale. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Let's go ahead and place our Bibles down. Let's, let's, let's call on the name of Jesus and ask for you know, to plant this into the fertile soil of our soul. Jesus, we need you. This is your word, and I need your help to teach this. The people's souls are on the line here. There are people coming and going and, and tossed about, and there's ideas and opinions and, 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 and different slants to things, God. But truth, your truth, has no versions. It's, it's not confusing. It's not clouded. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not messed up. It's pure. It's clean. It's righteousness. Help us to know your truth, to buy it and sell it not. And everybody's saying Jesus name. God bless you. You can be seated. I, I want to get this in your, if you ever got anything in your crawl, get this, get this in your crawl. What I'm going to teach tonight. Our, our, our country has been under emotional Financial, political attack. There's pandemics and problems and food and fuel prices have skyrocketed. Unrest is spreading worldwide. You're, you're living in the, in the last days. We are. There's just, you know, how many days we got, I don't know. But we're in the last of them. Change the sound here. Something needs to be altered there in the sound booth. Thank you. Things are so discombobulated that we can no longer trust any news media or reporting. I don't care who you're listening to. You don't know. You have no idea. The, uh, uh, when it comes to food, we have uh, the Food and Drug Administration, but let me give you this one. There's stuff they allow in American food other countries would never allow in our food. So you really can't trust that either. They're not out for us anymore. There's other things at play here. Political and Personal agendas have triumphed over truth and righteousness. Sadly, I'm talking about America. Today, they report on how they want you to believe rather than giving you the facts and letting you decide. Are you hearing me? There are those who believe who controls the narrative, the news controls the country. And it is somewhat true. Therefore, today's news is power. And now that power of control is being bought and sold. I was uh, perusing through some uh, things on, the, uh, on Twitter, looking at some of my pastoral friends and what's saying what's going on in this commercial came by. And it was someone that, oh, the Daily Daily Wire, which is a news thing. And they've been under attack because they stood for conservative views. And so some of the companies that advertise with them pulled their advertising. It's getting ugly, folks. And what I'm telling you is true. They are a truth. But I want to talk about the truth. Truth is important. Understanding that commerce has affected things. I want to talk about commerce. And commerce is the action of buying and selling one to another. It provides basically the backbone of our economy and it, it, it keeps our population and, and world and cities moving. Commerce or trade, it's the simple act of exchange, uh, uh, but one might be hard to explain this, how it's evolved. Uh, from when people first started using, when they only had what we called the barter system. 
I'll trade you this stone knife for your bushel of grain. <laughs> so, for an example, you exchange something that you have with someone who has something you want. You exchange items. You know what I'm saying? Today we use money, paper or plastic. I don't want to get into the depth of the whole plastic issue, but there we go. The only reason people accept paper, in fact, I handed someone money last night to go get something that Sister Crow wanted today. We're willing to trade that paper for that item. Does that make sense? So basically the value on the paper as a value equal or similar to the item you want to purchase. So you're trading paper, which paper has no inherent value by itself. It's paper. People throw paper away all the time. But because what's imprinted on that paper, which makes it money, has a, a face value to the value on the product that you want. So, young people, if you have 900, and I looked this up today to find out, if you have $999.99, you can go buy the brand new iPhone 13 Pro. It's a bad phone right there. Who knows? In the five minutes I've been talking, they probably come out with the iPro, iPad, iPro, whatever, 14. Who knows? 15's around the corner. But anyway. And so you could take your $999, walk in there, lay it down, and they will give you that hunk of plastic, metal, and and Computer chips. So you're trading for that metal and plastic $999.99. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's commerce. There's value. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so with that understanding, I want you to look through the lens of value about truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because we're going to get into that second pillar. A pillar that is a necessity. John 4 and 24 says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That, that's, not a, that's not a negotiation. You have to have the truth and you have to have the spirit. You can't sweep these aside. You can't sweep them under the rug. You need to be spirit filled, bubbling over. You need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Paul said, I'm glad I speak in tongues with y'all. No, you need to be spirit. If you're not, you need to get in the truth. You've bargained somewhere. You've traded somewhere. And you've let go of spirit and truth. If you're going to survive the storms that are coming, they're coming to us all, you will have to have a commitment. Everybody say commitment to unchanging truth. If I'm going to have a relationship with God, which stands that test of time and, and withstands those storms, I must not only be committed, everybody say committed, but I must be connected to unchanging truth. Everybody say connected. Second Timothy chapter four, verses one through four. I charge thee therefore before God in the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. You're a young minister wanting to minister. Listen to this. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Tell you right now, people don't like those words today. You're not going to reprove me. You're not going to rebuke me. I'm going to go somewhere where nobody says, okay, go, and ha go to hell because you don't want the truth. The truth is going to hurt. You can go to the doctors and tell you got cancer. Hey, you don't have a right to make me feel bad about what's going on. Okay, you're fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. That's what some people want. They don't want to fit. And that's why today we have what? They, they, people are still shopping. You can't say shopping without hopping. Be careful who you fellowship with. You can love them, but you better understand something. You better buy this truth and sell it not. Be careful who you're hanging out with. Be, you can't have fellowship with light and darkness. Be careful if they're willing to wound and hurt and hurt you or hurt your spirit or alter the word of God or come against it or the man of God or what the people of God. You have to wait a minute. Hold on. There's an unchanging. The Bible, mark them that cause me. There's truth to this thing. 
It's truth. Be careful that you aren't more concerned with aligning yourself with them and not aligning yourself with him. Be careful. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Be long suffering, but you better stick in the doctrine. Don't confuse this. There's no gray areas in God's truth. People create the gray areas. Feelings create the gray areas. He doesn't have, she doesn't have the, she. Listen, if you're not getting your personal self chafed a little bit in church, you're probably not in a church. You're probably in a club. I, 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 I hate to break it to you, but when I walked into church with all the stuff in my life, I wasn't doing anything right. I, I wasn't doing nothing right. I was a drug addict. I carried a gun. I could go deeper details here, but I wasn't doing anything right. I can tell you right now, I still don't do everything right. I thank God for my brothers and sisters that iron that sharpen the iron that helps me correct maybe my attitude, my altitude, my aptitude, all those things. You understand? There's people that are ever learning but never come to the knowledge. Of why? They don't want to. It's about them and not about him. Be careful. Be careful that you don't make it about you thinking that it's about him. Hear me now. For the time will come when they will not endure sound. Notice the word endure there. You're going to have to endure some stuff. If, if your child comes home and looks at you, you have been faithful to church. Don't you get mad and backhand that child because they told you the truth. You don't even make it time for prayer. You're hardly ever there. You want to give me all these rules? Well, wait a minute. I say this, man. Don't be in charge because you're the man. Be in charge because you lead in righteousness and truth. Bless God because I said so only lasts so long. Lead by showing, demonstrating, proving all things. Are you hearing me? But after their own lust shall they reap to themselves teachers. You want to hear what makes you feel good rather than what you need. It's sad that we spend so much money. I know I spend a lot of money on my doctors. And, and I don't mean this to be self-serving, but we're so cheap when it comes to the church. And a doctor ain't never going to get any of us out of here alive. But a pastor will. Yeah, you may not value me like I valued my pastor, but I promise you I'm pastoring like my pastor did because I valued what he did. Now, you may be willing to go spend a whole lot of money on the stuff in the world and come in and throw a buck in the offering here and feel like he did. Just good. That's on you. I, I don't do this for the income. I do it for the outcome. Most people don't appreciate an honest teacher or an honest preacher. Or an honest parent. Come on, parents. How many times you heard? Well, they let them do it down the road at Joey's house. We'll go look at Joey's parents. Yeah. Hold on. We're trying to go someplace different here. Yeah. Is this all right, church? <laughs> truth is truth. Yeah. Truth has no versions. If you're a good, godly parent and you're saying you're doing everything, you have a right to say, wait a minute, follow me as I follow Christ. You're not bringing that in this house. We're not doing that there. We're not treating one another here. You can come and go from a church, but we know everything about you by how you leave. You can't deny that. Don't lie about that. Don't turn around and back talk it because it shows the truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But after their own lust shall heap themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the People, we are our biggest problem. And shall be turned unto fables. So in order to maintain my, what's the first word? Commitment and connection. Everybody say commitment and connection. I must keep this admonition of scripture squarely in my sights. I got to make sure I got the truth. I got to make sure that the, the, as I read the word, it reads me and I change. 
I don't alter the word. The word alters me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Buy the truth. Sell it in God. The wise man was telling us here is exactly what I'm trying to tell you tonight. Listen, it's worth driving a long distance for. It's worth sacrificing for. Oh, a good godly pre truth preaching church is worth fasting for, staying up for, getting tired for, working long out. I'm telling you right now, there's a day coming when everybody goes, my God, that church is worth it. That truth is worth it. Give me my Bible. Give me my prayer life. Let me push all oh, by the truth. Sell it up. No matter what it costs. Being told and taught the truth. Being told and taught the truth. There's no limit to its value. You just can't see the end right now. You can't. What's he saying? Anything you have to pay to get the truth, it's worth it. Anything that's offered for it is not. You got an enemy that's trying to wheel and deal with you every day. Every day. Oh, you're tired. Oh, we went Sunday. Oh, we're doing good. We're okay. But understand the truth was worth much more than anything that would ever be offered in exchange. And there's commerce going on between an enemy that hates your soul and a God that loves you with everlasting life. But it all boils down to what you choose to buy and what you choose to sell. What you seem to hold as truth and what is really truth. This pillar of an unchanging truth can never be forfeited for a life to stand. You've got to hold it close. Remember that pearl of great price? It's truth. Whatever it costs, get it. Whatever it takes, hold on to it. Uh, friends are going to come and go, but trust me, the greatest friend in your life will be truth. So let's, let's define truth. It's among the great philosophical questions man has ever asked. Can truth be known? Is there a defined truth? What is truth? Is truth personal? In other words, is there an independent standard of what truth is, or is there one truth for you and another truth for me? Listen to me right now. And if you're going to write anything down, Layla, write this one down. First, it should be noted that truth is primarily a who and not a what. Truth is a who and not a what. Jesus saith unto him in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Truth is not simply a collection of facts or a code of beliefs. Truth is personified in the person of Jesus Christ. Real truth is Jesus Christ. Anything else is a mad name, subtle fabrication. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They built a, a ship many years ago called the Titanic. At that time, it cost seven and a half million dollars to build. But for the sake of the context that I'm preaching and teaching tonight, in that seven and a half million dollars, how much was the cost of the lifeboats they put on that great ship? I did a little research, and most people already know that they did not have enough lifeboats for everybody. But if they'd have spent $16,000 more and were worried less about the clutter to the deck, they would have enough lifeboat, lifeboats for everybody. So how much is a lifeboat worth? Anybody want a gander after that equation? This is sad. This, one of the smartest men in the room. 500. Are you kidding me? You're on the Titanic and you want to put a $500 price on a lifeboat? I say it's priceless. I say it's worth more than the $7.5 million they spent on it. 
Are you understanding how valuable truth is now? Are you understanding now? You can't put up. Do you really want to put a money value on a lifeboat when you realize the boat sank and all you had was a lifeboat? 500 bucks? 1,000? 16,000 for one? Seven and a half million for the boat that sank? Give me a lifeboat. I don't care. I'll give you everything I've ever got or made for that lifeboat because it's the only thing that survived the wreckage. Are you with me today? So understand that price, Jesus is that priceless truth of all the things you own and all the things you could have and all the things you could dream of owning. The most priceless thing is the unchanging truth of Jesus Christ because he only, he's the only way to get out of here alive. Are you? Did I lose you with that? Did you get that? Are you hearing me? How much are your breaks worth? Ask somebody who survived breaks failing. How much is your airbag worth? I remember seeing an accident that happened right in front of me. And this guy was pulling that in, tell us I was pulling in, and he got hammered. And I, in a flash, the, the airbag just filled the compartment. It saved his head, and, but he, he, he had obviously incurred something. And he's kind of just dazed. How much was that airbag worth? How much is truth worth to you tonight? How much is tolerating being faithful to the house of God, really reading the word, having a prayer like being full of the spirit and the truth? He expressed that truth. He is the expression of that truth. Captured it in his word. So truth is not an opinion. Truth is not a personal choice or observation. The word is forever settled, and it boldly declares this fact in Psalms 105. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And all the young people said, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, didn't stop with grandpa, great grandma. Thank you. All the young people said, thank you, Jesus, I can get it myself. The Jewish system tried to resist it. But his truth endures to all generations. The Roman Empire thought they could stamp it out, but his truth endures to all generations. Uh, the Dark Ages tried to hide it, but his truth endures uh, to all generations. Uh, even modern Christianity and former religious systems today have diluted and corrupted and, and messed with the message of the New Testament, but his truth endures to all generations. I said his truth endures right up. You have access. It's right before you. Will you buy it and sell it not? And I can tell you that as long as he tarries, his truth will endure for even more generations. Psalms 117 and 2. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. His truth is expressed through his word. And what is commonly called his high priest prayer. In John 17, Jesus made this request. Listen. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word sanctify means to make holy. The word is powerful. It can transform you from a carnal sinner to a holy saint. Oh, how many thank God for the process right now? I'm going to hold on to that truth. I'm buying it and I'm selling it not. Paul doubles down and he says, uh, he makes this statement in Ephesians 5 and 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That truth is powerful. The person of truth is Jesus Christ. The expression of his truth is his word. Truth is not confined to a select number of verses in the Bible. This truth goes from the first page to the last. And yet the essential application of this truth does find its identity in some of the core doctrines or teachings. I cannot possibly cover them all here tonight, but I will express central doctrinal positions of Souls Harbor Church and its pastor. 
among the chief of those is the identity of God in Jesus Christ. There may be no more central teaching of truth than this. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. I want to encourage everyone here to ensure that this pillar stands in your spiritual house. Oh, you better make sure, young people, you better get that one. You better get that one installed. You better make sure it's there. God is indivisibly one. Not merely one in purpose or one in thoughts and will. He is one in his essence. Isaiah 45 and 6, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside him. I am the Lord and there is none else. That one God who is above all, through all, and in us all took on himself the cloak of humanity. Ephesians 4 and 6, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Thank God for the truth of one God. 2 Timothy 3, 16, and without controversy. The world wants controversy. But God gives us clarity. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. John's gospel has told us that his word that was in the beginning and was God became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The revelation of truth in the person of Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. When the man Christ Jesus walked among his creation, he was not part of God. He was not subjugated portion of the Godhead. He had all power and all authority. He healed sickness. He cast out demons. He forgave sin. He overcame death. Why? For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians 2 and 9. The Redeemer opened the door to salvation through the completed work on Calvary and through the rising from the dead. The gospel or the good news is that Jesus led, died, was buried, and rose again. This gospel is truth. Everybody say truth. Ephesians 1 13. In whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believe, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. In response to the truth of his gospel, we are called to obedience. Oh, that's a tough word for humanity today. First Peter 4, 17, for the time has come that judgment, our preacher this weekend mentioned this verse, must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Mm. Thank God I'm in the church. Amen. Oh, I'm glad I'm here tonight. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm thank God. Let it, okay, if it begins, oh man, let, let, me, let me judge myself right now. Can you, judge, can you be honest and judge yourself? I, I got out with my brother. I got out with my sister. I got this going on. I got, oh, let me, woe is me. Let me get me right. The gospel is not simply something we know or something we believe. It is something we must obey. Mm. It's not a club. It's not another subculture that you belong to. It's, oh, I'm a churchgoer. No, I'm a, I believe in the unchanging truth of an almighty God. We're not, we're not just a gathering. We are the church that he redeemed with his own blood. 2 Thessalonians 1.18, in the flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear what that said? Hold on to your hat here. Know not and obey not. What? You mean I just can't do it how I want to do it? I just can't go my own way. I can't say, well, you have your church and I have my church and I have my church at home or, or I go out in the woods or I go to Starbucks and, and drink my God. Hey. That's confusion. That nobody would know, nobody would know, nobody would know anything. It'd be mass confusion and pandemonium knowing how well, which way do we go? Hmm. 
How many remember that story of, well, what's her face? Alice in Wonderland. Come to the fork in the road. Didn't know which way to go. What, was it the Cheshire Cat up there? Was it the Cheshire Cat? Well, where are you going? I don't know. Then it doesn't matter. How many want to go to heaven? How many knows truth matters? Everybody say unchanging truth. Let's thank God for unchanging truth right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. And we obey that gospel by following the words of the man who was given the keys to the kingdom. Simon Peter stood on the day of Pentecost and provided clarity, that first declaration of how to obey the gospel. Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I, I, we can't let that get old. You can't let that. You have to understand of all the things you know today. How many know how much you got in the bank? How many know how much gas you got in your tank? How many know how much you're going to make at the end? Of, to know all that and make that important. But to miss this and not to stand on this one thing and not to realize, uh, oh, that's nice. That's, that, that, that's buffet in the, in the, in the dinner quarters. Uh, uh, that's, that, that, that's nice to have in that sheets uh, in, 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 my, in my room. And, uh, oh, that's a nice deck chair. Out, but, but I, I need the name. I need to make sure I got the lifeboat of this world that's sinking. And do by, I got the lifeboat of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that unchanging truth that no matter when or how it sings, I'm going to make it. We can't let this get old. Wisdom dictates that truth remains a pillar. Although it ought to arrest us when we start going, oh, I don't know about when he says this or when he says that, I, I don't know about. And then what we have so much faith in the world systems. It's all going to collapse. It's all going to collapse. It's hanging by a thread, but this isn't. But dude, we got a great cloud of witnesses that prove this isn't. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, but what about my wonderful auntie? What about my Aunt Darlene? What about my Uncle Jeff? What about my Auntie Sissel? God is God. Listen to me here at this sensitive moment that causes so many people to lose out. God is God and he's good at it. You can't out Jesus, Jesus. Stop being so arrogant that you think you have to have an answer for a loved one or something. Hey, get off your high horse. Trust me, it ain't tall enough to get you to heaven. He's the judge of the whole earth. And he does right. He and he alone will decide the eternal condition of every man and woman. I preach funerals. It's not my place to decide where they go from there. You're arrogant to think you have to have an answer or you have an opinion of where someone comes or goes until you're sitting at the right hand of God. I'm staying with what I know. My first responsibility is to buy the truth and sell it not. Wave your hand over and say, I don't even know if I believe this anymore. Or I don't even know. You have allowed the world to creep in. You started buying into an understanding. The world makes more sense to me than this. Well, we know the world's doomed. Listen, are we getting dumber as a, as a race? We are absolutely not. I worked for Intel back in the day. I, 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 those, those equations and what they do and how that... It has escaped me when you get into trigonometry. You know, okay, yeah, leave me out of astrophysics. I cannot do the calculation of the curvature and the moving up to get us to the moon. So I'm not going to get involved in how he gets us to heaven. He can handle that part. I'm going to leave my arrogant self out of trying to say how it all works out. I don't know how. To, I know who's got to work it out, and it ain't me. <laughs> All I know is he's given me his unchanging truth. And if I'm going to buy or sell anything, if I'm going to accumulate in my closet, in my garage, it's just one. I'll sit in an empty house with a Bible on the middle of the floor and relax. I'll hold on to that before I think I got anything else that matters. You see, 
I want to build a spiritual house that has this truth so ingrained in its structure that my children and your children and anybody else's children and family can cling to this truth until he comes back. Oh, I want to echo the words of Paul in Galatians chapter 1. Listen, folks, some of you that start questioning the word of God, you find, you'll find yourself here. You start doubting and think you're going to question God about the affairs of men and how things are going. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. I don't care what's popular, but what isn't. I don't care who stays true or who perverts it. I don't care if those closest to me decide on another way. I don't care what the government says. I, I'm not going to make myself mindful and concerned with all of that. My life has to be built around this pillar. My life has to have this pillar of truth. My children, my family, no matter what their relationship is, I have to have this truth as a pillar in my life. I don't ever want to sway from I'm not confused, my wife. I might confuse my children with all my getting and all my buying and all my selling and all my doing. I want it to be said, I got this truth. <clears throat> and this truth will be the truth no matter what my relationship with anybody is, even my own children. Truth stands independent of family beliefs and traditions. Truth stands independent of public opinion. Truth stands independent of social or even religious trends. Truth stands independent of political agendas. It isn't dependent on anything. It just is, and it always will be. We have to make the commitment to cling to it. I'm going to cling to the truth. I want to buy it and sell it not. Can I just say that we are blessed to be serving God in truth? Not just everyone has this relationship with truth. Hear me when I say this. And don't take this truth for granted today. Don't think the fact that you might be able to wrap your mind around even some of its most basic tenets. The, the word of God describes those who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth in 2 Timothy 3, 7. Oh, anybody understand the truth today? Anybody realize Oh, then Peter said unto them, repent. Then, are, are, you, are you with me? You need to thank God. Oh, I thank God I got it. I'm not going to let nothing sway me. I'm going to hold on. It is vital that we have knowledge of the truth. First Timothy 2 and 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Oh, we need the truth. But beyond just knowing the truth, we are called in here. This is key. Don't let God pay for what the world's done to you. Don't let God's truth pay for how things have gone on in your life because when you say you hate the church or you hate the truth or you have aught against anything of God, we are called to love this. Oh, you are called to love this. It'll grate against your personality and your person because sometimes we just think we're bigger than we know better than God and God needs to cater to our feelings instead of his truth. And I know I'm preaching to you. We got to love the one whose truth this is more than anything else, even your own life, or as Job said at my necessary food, 2 Thessalonians 2.10, and with all, listen to this, deceivableness. What's the scary thing about being deceived? You don't know it. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 
Hmm. I'm going to do something here. When I wrote this today, it's a foolish thing to say, well, if my spouse ain't going or my child ain't going to heaven, I don't want to go either. That just lets me know you are so far from God. Even grandbabies. You better hear me on this. You, you don't understand the other side if you can make such a statement. Because trust me, if the roles were reversed, they ain't going to go to hell for you either. So quit being so myopic that you think you're so important that they would. The devil's bought you, got you to buy into that lie. I urge you. I urge you. Listen to me. To give your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, freedom to love God and his truth over you. Sister Crow, I know some of them can't handle this. But if I sway from this, you leave me, not this. You better get it with the grandbabies. You better get it with your children. You better understand it over you single guys. You single girls, you, you better understand something. God, God, you, you sit there and argue about different opinions, but you better fall in love with this or you're really no good to them. Let me explain it. You can't lead them to it with your opinions, but you can lead them to it if you'll hold on to it as the most important pillar in your life. You won't lead your husband. You won't lead your wife. You won't lead your children until you make this first. Until God is first, he's last. I want to be saved. I must be saved. If you and I want to be saved, we have got to have a true love for this truth that we don't care what anybody thinks. We'll run to an altar. We'll grab that altar and we'll make, ah, Jesus, don't ever let me get beside myself with arrogance and worldly pride, lust of the flesh, lust of the, hear me, it'll deceive you. It'll deceive you. Listen, on a very personal level, every one of us has to have a love relationship with truth. If people don't have a love for the truth, I don't care who they are in your life, you are going to have to allow there to be a wall. Yeah. You're going to have to decide. And for those of you that have never gone through a relationship problem, you better pay attention. You better pay attention. I'm not teaching this to be exclusive. I'm trying to tell you that you better get into church. You better get into it. You better fall in love with it. You better realize that you don't follow them out. Lead them in. Let me explain to you those porters. We're trying to get all those folks into the lifeboats that they had on the Titanic. The Bible tells us in Mark 12, 30, listen to this. This is not ambiguous. This is to you and me. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. We got to obey, not because he's mean, but because he loves us. And there is not one person on this planet worth going to hell over. I don't care who you think they are to you. Get in the church with all you got. This world is sinking. One of the most wealthiest men on the planet at the time, John Jacob Astor, the richest passenger on board the Titanic. Net worth of roughly 87 million when he died with the Titanic. Equivalent to a value of 2.33 billion in 2020. A witness overheard him. Listen to me. Make this statement. As the lifeboat got launched away, this witness that was on the lifeboat said, overheard Astor saying, it was safer on the big liner than in the little lifeboat among the floating ice. All his money. Hey, rich man, rich lady, 
lover of the things of this world, don't be a fool. You are not better off no matter what this world says or makes it. I don't care what you think you got. If you're not in the lifeboat, everybody dies on that. Everybody dies on the Titanic. You better have a lifeboat. You better understand the lifeboat is this truth. There is a great view of this. And I'm going to be bringing this to a close. I'm talking about commitment and connection. You can't love God and hate the church. You can't mistreat God and love the church. You can't mistreat the church and say you love God. Be careful of people who talk out of both sides of their mouth. Be careful about this. Be thankful that you got a pastor and people in this church say, wait a minute. We don't conduct ourselves that way. If you're willing to hurt the church, you, uh, uh, we don't want nothing to do. You go do your thing someplace else. Ah, don't want us to fall in love with you while you don't love the church. You want to hate the church? There's something wrong in your heart. That's why we have altars. Altars ain't for people just giving up cigarettes. Altars for people giving up lies they've been believing. Attitudes they've got. Oh, let's get real here. Turn to, you may be able to turn to your family and say, man, I urge you to live, live and love God more than me, please. There's a man by the name of Naboth. He owned a vineyard. It was close by the palace of Ahab, that backslidden king of Israel. Careful people in position. They may not necessarily really represent God. And I'm going to do a better job of who we allow to have positions around here. Ahab would look out his window and see that vineyard. And he went out to Naboth with an offer. In 1 Kings 21 and 2, and Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. The devil always wants to offer you something. Oh, it looks better. Or if it seemed good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Everybody say commerce. What's the other two words that we're learning tonight? Commitment and connection. King of Israel basically offered a blank check, Brother Jonathan. You fill it out. This trade or an outright purchase, whatever. Your, your, your call, Naboth, whatever you want. Really? Isn't that what it's like out there? Whatever you want, young people. Whatever. Oh, be careful when we say, Oh, my cup's running over. I'm drinking from the side. That sounds all good. It does. It sounds awesome. I hope it's, I hope it's all true like we want it to be. But am I so busy drinking from the saucer I'm no longer reading from his word? Hey, this smites me in my heart. Look, I got to deal with worldliness. I got to deal with covetousness. What, y'all, y'all think I, I, I... Life is not just gray and dull in a little tiny box. I, mean, I see everything you do. The opportunity was there. And he could name his price. Wow. The world's your oyster. There's nothing you can buy or get whatever you want. I'm telling you right now, you can come from nowhere and become a wealthy person in this world. But instead, Naboth gave his answer. And Naboth said to Ahab, we were talking last night at last night's Bible study about someone selling their birthright. So this is not the only place, is it? Said they have, the Lord forbid it me. God doesn't want me to do that. The first thing in the world is to say, well, has God really asked you to do that? Well, you don't, see, don't, don't, don't get in a contextual argument with people that don't understand context. If they don't love God, they don't. Look, there's plenty of, brother, there's plenty of women out there arguing you don't need to be faithful to your wife. There's, and vice versa. There's plenty of kids out there telling your kids, hey, your parents suck. You don't have to listen to them. How many parents are doing your dead level best? And what does some little ignorant kid really know about what it takes to be a parent? And what's an unmarried person really know what it takes to be married? I want you to talk. So what are those people not committed to God going to talk to you about being? 
I, I won't talk to somebody who doesn't value ministry like I do to be involved in my ministry. I watch, I watch people take other things over. Ah, you know, it's primary to me. Giving up a lot for it. But in the spec I haven't given up anything. I've gained. The Lord forbid it me. Listen to what else he says. That I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Did you hear the connection and commitment in that? When David looked at the vineyard, he saw something more than simply a patch of earth. With some walls, some plants, some towers, maybe some flowers. You see, he saw something that had been given to him. That the law, that, that relationship forbade him to sell. Buy the truth, sell it. No, he, he, he saw an investment from the generations before him. He saw something of greater worth than anything a backslider could ever possibly offer him. He had a connection and a commitment bigger than the compromise. I pray that when you look, let's all stand, at truth, when you go through your Bible reading every day and you come across Acts 2.38 or all those other doctrinal verses that, 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 that are so important, that you see something more than simply membership with this local assembly, more than just something shared or some convenient agreement, more than simply a religious identity. Truth is a spiritual heritage from our Father in heaven. Truth is a treasure worth more than any man or woman or any devil can offer me. Truth is of greater value than my feelings, my opinions, or my emotions. Truth will stand. Truth will last. Truth is not like some artwork or painting on the wall of a, your spiritual house that can be changed with styles or moved for effect. Truth is a pillar that I will not part with no matter what it may cost me. Because it's what's keeping my house standing. Storms will come. Backsliders will tempt. The lukewarm and cold will offer. But I have a shelter. Built on obedience to the word of God. I have a house built on my connection and commitment to the word of God. Psalms 91 and 4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. I'm asking, I'm pleading, and I'm looking for a recommitment and a reconnection to the truth today. I'm looking and asking that every family, every person, every individual tonight would come around this altar, that we would pray together around this pillar of truth, that it would be central in value in our homes, in our lives. John, he says, for I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth.